I told you I'm going to be preaching hard because we got, we got to get right. I want us to be spiritual. Amen. I want us to be spiritual. We got to be spiritual this year. Amen. And, we gonna, and once we start, we're going to stay spiritual. We're not, we, we're not going to go back to the weak and the begging elements. We're not going to go back to sinning. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna perfect this lifestyle. Amen. The book of James. Let's go to the book of James chapter 3. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Today we're going to talk about, and remember I told you that we're going to deal with a lot of sins. I'm going to show you sin that you don't know that you are committing, and I want to show you that you got a lot of things. Now, the beginning of all of our sin is your tongue. Your tongue is the beginning of all your sin. Amen. Whatever you do, it's going to come from, of course, we know it comes out of your heart, but it comes out of your mouth. But we're going to get to the point. We're going we're gonna to get our mouth right. So the, the title of today's sermon and, and for the next, probably for the next two or three Sundays is the nature of the tongue. The nature of the tongue. I want you to get that. The nature of the tongue. Amen. We're going to get our tongue right. When you get your tongue right, you can get a lot of other things right. And let me tell you something else. People, people, what's going to win people to Christ the most is what, how you live and how you walk. Amen. Your tongue are going to either uh, uh, verify what you do or it's going to disqualify what you do. But your tongue is going to be the problem. Amen. You walk around all the time talking about how saved you are. But when you open your mouth, people get a whole different perspective of you. Amen. Then they let you what you're telling them. I'm really not as saved as I said or I act because my tongue just spoke against everything that I say I do. So we got to get this tongue under control. Amen. The nature of the tongue. We stumble over a whole lot of things in our life. We stumble over a whole lot of things in our life. But it's time for us to stop stumbling over running our mouth. Amen. It's time for us to stop stumbling over running our mouth and saying things. And I'm going to show you a word today. See, people always try to say certain words not in the Bible. Well, people like say cursing is not in the Bible. Well, yes, it is. I'm going to show you that today. There is a word that means cussing or profanity or foul language. Amen. I tell you all these things all the time, but I'm going to show you before this year is out I'm gonna show you just about everything we are doing today is a sin and we gonna fix it though by the by the time this year is over chapter 3 of the book of James everybody got it verse 1 let's read he said my brethren be not many masters knowing that we shall receive don't you run around trying to act like you're in charge of everybody and controlling everybody. Don't run around trying to be the boss. Amen. You ain't the boss. So stop trying to be so many masters. Stop thinking you're in charge and running things. You ain't running nothing but your shoes over. That's all you're in charge of. Come on. Verse 2, he said what? For in many things we offend all, and any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle. For what? Verse 2. Read it again. For in many things we offend all. In other words, there's a lot of things we do that offend people. There's a lot of things we do that mess up. There's a lot of things that we do that cause problems. But what did he say after that? In many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word. Hallelujah. That same is a perfect man and able also to bridle. If you can get control over your mouth. Hallelujah. If you can stop saying things that offend people, you can get yourself in check. The problem is you run in your mouth. And then when somebody tell you to shut up, you get an attitude. Hallelujah. The bottom line, get control over that tongue. The nature of the tongue is to always say things that ain't got no business saying. But he just told you, you want to be perfect and you want to control everything about yourself? Shut your mouth. Hallelujah. Talk when God tells you to talk and shut up when God tells you to shut up. Oh, hallelujah. Read verse 2 again. He said, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, and is able also to bridle the whole body. If I can shut my mouth when I'm supposed to, I won't lust. If I can shut my mouth when I'm supposed to, I won't lie. If I can shut my mouth when I'm supposed to, I won't offend nobody. I'll become perfect. Hallelujah. But the problem is, we don't like to keep our mouth closed. We always got to say something. Come on. Verse 3, he said what? Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth and 
that they may obey us. We turn about their whole body. Behold, so the ship, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce wind, yet are they turned about with a very small ham. <laughs> In other words, if you know anything about ship, they got a little thing under the water they call a rudder. They turn that rudder, I don't care how strong that wind is, that ship is going to move. Hallelujah. But you can't seem to get your mouth to get you to go the right direction. Hallelujah. We can control a whole lot of things, but we can't seem to control our mouth. Talking about the nature of the tongue. Come on, verse 5, he said what? Even so. The tongue is a what? A little member. The tongue is a little member and boasts its great thing. Oh, hallelujah. You can walk around and talk about how good you are. Well, I'm this and I'm that. But when I look at your lifestyle, you ain't nothing but a lying, backbiting, no good, hypocritical Christian or a saint. Hallelujah. You can boast great things. I love the Lord. I love the Lord and barely want to come to church. You can go around boasting about how nice and how humble you are. Let somebody say something and cuss you. You ready to cuss them back? Listen, you can boast great things, but it's something about that tongue just don't make you do right. Hallelujah. Come on, verse 5 again from the top. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great thing. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindled. Verse 6, and the tongue is as, tongue is what? And fire burn things down. Come on. And the tongue is a fire. A world, a world, a world. In other words, there ain't nothing good about your mouth. Amen. A world of iniquity. The nature of the tongue is a world of iniquity. In other words, the tongue got a whole lot of lies. The tongue got a whole lot of both. In other words, the tongue has got a whole lot of sin. Hallelujah. But I'm going to get control over my mouth. I'm going to get control over my tongue. Come on. Verse 6 again. And the tongue is a fire. A world so is the tongue among our members that it among our members that it defied the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature and is set on fire Psalm verse 30 chapter 34 keep something there put something there we're coming back hallelujah thank you Jesus talking about the nature of the tongue what is it a world of iniquity ain't nothing good about you running your mouth hallelujah you think cause you correct somebody you did some good no you just created or show more iniquity that's in your life hallelujah every time you get smart with somebody it's just a world of iniquity every time you think you can compete against the word of God it's just a world of iniquity every time you feel like you got to correct somebody when the Holy Ghost tell you to shut up it's just a world of iniquity get control over your mouth get control over your tongue and you can say some good things but until you get control over your tongue you ain't gonna do nothing right hallelujah you just read the man say if you can control your tongue you become perfect oh hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah come on shout hallelujah we're going to get control over our tongue. I told you I'm going to show you about sin. You want to get better this year? You want to get spiritual this year? Learn to shut your mouth. Learn to shut your mouth. If it ain't good, don't open your mouth. I don't care how much you think it, don't say it. Hallelujah. I don't care how much you think you can do something. You know you ain't got it right. Don't say it. Yeah. Shut up. If you don't know what you're talking about, shut up. Hallelujah. Because when you open your mouth and you don't know what you're talking about, you're going to lie. And when you lie, yes, listen, that's part of that world of iniquity. Oh, the nature of the tongue. The nature of the tongue love to boast. Listen, the world love to boast, doesn't it? The world what they love to talk about what they can do. I can do, I can do, I can do. And all they're doing is going to hell. Listen, you keep talking about what you can do and don't do it. Then the Bible says something about it's better for you not to say what you're going to do for God and don't do it. It's better you keep your mouth shut. That's what it said. In other words, uh, my mama used to say back in my day, don't let your tongue overload your body. In other words, stop saying things you're going to do when you do it. Oh, hallelujah. Stop saying, hallelujah, you, you love God when you can't give tithes right. Stop saying you love God when you still backbiting. Stop saying you love God when you still a liar. Listen, you just run it. And you're going to get in trouble. That's the nature of the tongue. Chapter 34 of the book of Psalm. Verse 11. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Come on. I love this. You got it? He said what? Come, you children. And I'm going to teach you. Come on, children. I'm going to teach you something. I'm going to teach you how to be afraid of God. I'm going to teach you how to fear God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Verse 12. He said what? And love is many days. 
How many of y'all don't love what you're doing? How many of y'all don't love being alive? How many of y'all don't want to see something good? I'm going to show you how to get there. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, this is what the man is saying. How many of y'all walking around that don't love what you're doing? Love living. You know you love it. Don't lie to yourself. Hallelujah. How many of y'all don't want to live good the rest of your life? He going to tell you the first key to living good is fearing God. The only way you're going to show that you fear God is to close your mouth. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Next verse. What does it say? 12. Read 12 again for me. What man is he? Listen, folks are popping pills, getting operation, doing all kinds of exercise because they love life. So don't tell me you don't love life. Don't tell me you don't love it. Hallelujah. You're doing all of this stuff to stay alive. Listen, the reason you eat food every day is to stay alive. The reason you drink water every day is to stay alive. So don't say you don't love this life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What's the next part? What? And let what? And love many days. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. And, and, and love in many days that he may see good. You try to see good every day of your life. You work hard. You buy things. You put clothes on because you want to look good. Hallelujah. So don't say you don't love life. Don't tell that lie. Don't tell that lie. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. What's the next verse? He said, what? Hallelujah. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lip from keep thy tongue from evil and thy lip from speaking God. Stop saying things you ain't got no business saying and stop saying things to deceive people. Listen, God meaning you're deceiving every time you open your mouth. Listen, the man is giving you the instructions on how to do good in his life. In other words, shut up when you ain't got no business talking. If it ain't good, don't say it. And if you ain't, listen, and don't say nothing to deceive nobody. Oh, hallelujah. Either tell the truth or shut your mouth. Hallelujah. That's why I tell y'all sometimes, you don't want me to answer that. Listen, I'm being, I'm, I'm being nice to you. I'm telling you, you really don't want me to answer that. Yes, I do. No, you don't. You think you do because you think you're going to get something that's going to make you feel good. I'm about to say something that's going to offend you, but it is for your good. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's the thing about coming to serve God. People come to serve God and think all oh, God is going to tell them, I love you, I love you, I love you. Hallelujah. But when you find out the truth, you find out he loves you, but not the way you think love is. The way God loves you is to get you straight so he can get you to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. One thing about being deceitful, when you speak deceitful, this being deceitful to destroy a lot of marriages. Being deceitful, you are committing adultery. Where you going, honey? I'm going to the store. Did you deceitful? You're going to go to the store, but you're going to swing by that other person's house. You're being deceitful. Another thing it does is damage friendship. How many of y'all done lost friends because somebody was deceitful? Not that they point blank lie. They deceive you, and you find out why didn't you? Well, you could have told me that you, but I didn't want to offend you. You're lying. You didn't tell them the truth because you didn't want them to know what you were doing. Come on. Another thing that it does, it caused wars being deceitful. Well, I'm, I'm listen, uh, 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 Hitler. Hitler told them that he was a nice fella. He was this. And they got him, put him in control. When they put him in control, one of the worst leaders that ever lived. Deceitful. Talking about the tongue. The tongue is something else. That's why you need to understand how bad your tongue is. Another thing that it does, it prevented promotions on your job. It disturbed children. It ruined reputation. It aroused fight and it main body. Listen, when you're walking around deceitful and telling lies, you cause a whole lot of problems. Every time you told your mama, she said, John, don't do so and so. Mama ain't doing that. You went right out the door and did it, didn't you? <sighs> talking about lying, talking about that tongue. Hallelujah. It's amazing. When you say you're not going to do something, you do put forth a little effort not to do it. It may take a while for you to do it, but when you just straight up lie, yeah, I'm lying because I'm doing that. I'm going to do that. It ain't never in it your mind not to do it. But it's one thing when you say, I'm going to do it. Listen, you have a little obstacle there. Now, the best thing to do is just be quiet. Oh, I'm going to show you that in a second. I got to get it in your spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. What, what, what verse we stopped at? 13. Read it again. Keep that tongue. Keep that tongue from evil. You want to have long life and you want to get perfect? Shut your mouth from evil. And do what else? And stop lying stop tricking stop being deceitful come on proverbs chapter 10 oh hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus 
We stumble over a lot of things, y'all. We stumble over a lot of things. But time for us to stop stumbling over that tongue. It's time for us to shut our mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's time for us to keep your mouth. I, I, I know it's going to come up somewhere down the road where he say, when you keep your mouth, you preserve your soul too. In other words, learning to keep your mouth closed keep you out of a lot of trouble with God. See, one thing about God, he already knows it's in your heart. Just don't say it. Don't say it. Try not to say it. Then after, you're not, after you get to the point you don't say it, you'll get to the point you won't do it. The world teaches some, some uh, 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 what that motivational stuff like that because they know it's true. Listen, it works whether you do it spiritually or carnal. It works. But we want to do it spiritually. We're trying to get spiritual because we want to go to heaven. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 18. What did it say? He that hideth hatred. Oh, hallelujah. He that hide, he that hideth hatred with lying lip and utter. I, I wrote some down. Evil, evil submersions, misinterpretation, falsehood, calamities, jealousy, envy, wrath, and malice. Now, we know all of those words is in the Bible. We're going to go back and look them up before this year is over. I'm trying to show you. When you get to the point that you have hatred and you get the line and get to tell them, oh, oh yeah, I like you. No, you don't. Don't tell that lie. You hate them. Just tell them you hate them. Better yet, just don't say nothing. Learn to love them. Hallelujah. But don't go around telling folks you like them when you know you don't. Listen, just shut up and don't say a word. Just put up with them. Listen, hallelujah. Because when you tell a person, when you try to act like you like a person, and then you tell Cassini, I like you, or are you my friend, and then you go and tell somebody else, Cassini, get on my nerve. It's going to get back to Cassini. It's going to call Cassini a problem because they got in her face and you lied. Yeah. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Oh, hallelujah. How many times going back to destroying marriages? Oh, I love you. I love you. But you got a girlfriend, boyfriend, or husband on the other side. Listen, what you mean you love them when you got somebody on the other side? What you mean you love God? You don't obey him. Oh, Lord, I, I love the Lord. I'm, I love God. God is my Savior. But you're in the club dancing like some, other, like, like some natural whore, like everybody else. Hallelujah. But you say you love God, but you're out lying just like everybody, but you love God. In other words, you saying too much. In other words, your mouth is overloading your body. Going back to what Peter said, listen, we can boast great things. But what kind of lifestyle are you living? Because you're lying. Because you keep running your mouth. Listen, if you know you don't love God, that's okay. Man, why don't you work towards loving him and stop lying that you love him when you know you don't. God tell you not to lie and you do it. If I tell my wife, if I tell my wife, I don't want you to, I don't want you to listen to another man. And she says she loves me. She go listen to another man. Do I really believe she loves me? I don't believe you love me because you ain't listening to me. You do what I tell you, then I believe you love me. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Listen, God said, if you love me, you do what? Amen. See, y'all got the, y'all, see, you don't know the scripture. Lord, he said, if he that love me, keep his ETA continually, keep his my commandment. But you say you love God and you break his commandments at the drop of a hat. How can you convince God that you love him when he said the evidence that you love me, you keep my commandments? So your mouth boasts this great thing, but you can't bag them up. Why? Oh, hallelujah. Because you can't bag them up. You can't bag them up. I ain't going to tell you how to do it today. Come on. What, what, what verse we stopped at? 18, 19. What does it say? He said, well, in the minute, in the multitude of words, in the multitude of words, I like that. In other words, you walk around. When in a multitude of words, I ain't going to do, I ain't going to do, I'm not going to do, I don't like to do. In the multitude of words, you act like you don't want to sin because you're running your mouth all the time. Oh, hallelujah. But that's about it. It's just in your worry. Because when somebody look at you, you got a bad, in other words, here's a good one. You say that you happy in the Lord. But you're walking around sad. See, some people like to preach that you ain't going to be happy all the time in the Lord. That's a lie. I don't know where you get that from. 
Listen, that don't mean I won't have tests and trials, but I'm going to be happy in them. Because then Paul said, I take pleasure in my persecution. I take pleasure in my distresses. That means I may have problems, but I'm still happy. So don't tell me I can't be happy in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm broke just like the next fellow, but I'm thrilled to death. Come in here shouting. All I want to do was just shout for the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I got bills due, bagged up, late fees, and everybody, like everybody else. But I'm happy in the Lord. Am I sick? Yeah, I got big time problems. Hallelujah. But I'm happy in the Lord. Oh, so don't tell me you can't be happy. You boasted great things, but you can't live up to them. Oh, hallelujah. The tongue. Talking about the nature of the tongue. In other words, the tongue loves to run his mouth. The tongue loved to run his mouth. Come on. Did we read all of that? In the multitude of worry, their want is not sin. But he that refrains his lip, he that does what? He that does what? Stop boasting about what you are and what you can do. You want to have some wisdom? You want to have some sense? Shut up. Ain't that what that means? Refrain it, meaning I ain't going to say nothing. You know you ain't happy serving God. Don't say nothing. Don't tell no lie then. Just say, if you're going to tell, if you're going to say something, tell the truth. Well, I'm struggling serving the Lord, but I'm trying to get there. Then maybe, then maybe it won't be so bad. Hallelujah. But don't say you're happy in God when you know you're going home sad today. Amen. You ain't happy then. You got to take pleasure in your tribulation. You got to rejoice at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But he that is wise, he that framing his lips, got some sense. Oh, hallelujah. I, I, I did not walk around boasting about I had gotten over uh, lust until I got over it. When I got over it, I've been boasting ever since because I'm over it. Hallelujah. I, I done got to the point. My wife is the only woman that turned me on. I can say that. I can, I can boast that with my chest stuck out because I'm over that sin. Hallelujah. But I couldn't boast about it until I got over it. In the meantime, people talked about it. I would get out of their presence because I ain't going to tell you, but I got a problem with it too. But when I got over it, oh man, you can do that. Oh, you can't do that, Brother John. You a lie. Because I'm there. Holl oh, hallelujah. But when I get there, I can boast about it. Listen, y'all walking around boasting about being saved and y'all can't even come to church right. I'm saved. I love the Lord. And you sitting at home on Sunday. <laughs> I'm saved, I love the Lord, and can't get a dime out your pocket. I'm saved, I love the Lord, won't spend a dime to get closer to God. Listen, that's a lie. Stop boasting great things that you can't fulfill. Like the old folks say again, stop letting your mouth overload your body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. What, what, what verse we at? 20? Come on, you got it? Don't y'all get quiet on me. You're going to make me preach harder. Verse 20 says what? The tongue of the just and the heart of the wicked the tongue of the just is what like choice that means you took your time and chose the right thing listen when you do right by God that means you are a excellent choice in other words what did James say you're perfect when you know how to control your mouth in other words I'm not going to say what I can say unless I can back up what I say I'm not going to say I love serving God until I really love serving God. I'm not going to say that I, I don't lie. I tell y'all all the time, I'm a big liar. Got no problem telling you. I know I'm a big liar, but I'm working hard on it. I'm getting to the point, I ain't going to promise you nothing that I can't fulfill. And if you ask me something, I say, let me think about it. Let me pray. And that better, I, see, I ought to just obey the scripture like we all ought to do. If it's the Lord's will, I do it. That's what we need to practice if it's the Lord will because I may have good intentions on giving you that hundred dollars and God may come along and say John you can't give it. I lied. I boasted great things. Now you don't have you're going to lose respect because every time he promised me something he don't give it because I keep promising something but God keeps saying you can't do it. Now what am I going to do? Am I going to disobey God or am I just going to obey John? Hallelujah to make myself look good. I look good for you brother Art, but with God I'm in big time trouble. Because I disobeyed him. Oh, so if it's the Lord will, I do that. Amen. Ain't that's what the Bible say? Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to show y'all. We boast great things and can't fulfill them. So that make us liars. Oh, hallelujah. And all liars are going to have their place in the lake of fire. Come on. Got another one for you. Proverbs chapter 13. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We need to stop being deceitful. One who can bridle his own tongue 
is qualified to teach others. If you can't bridle your tongue, you ain't qualified to teach nobody because you got a problem. The major problem. The problem that's going to cause all of your problems when you open your mouth. If you can't bridle your tongue, then you're going to say things to make folks happy, but it goes against the word of God. In other words, if you can't bridle your tongue, you are not qualified to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I read that and I said... I said, wait a minute, Lord. In my mind, I ain't bright on my tongue. So why you got me preaching and teaching when I feel like I have him bright on my tongue? I'm waiting for him to respond to me. He ain't responded yet because I know he called me to preach. But in my mind, hallelujah, I'm like, Paul, I haven't attained yet. So what puts me in that position to do something? But yet and still, I know if you don't know how to shut your mouth, that's why a lot of time y'all say something to me and you know I go, hmm. How many times y'all see me do that? You say something to me, I just go, hmm. Or oh, I just look at you. Then y'all go, <laughs> y most of y'all know right there, I'll leave that alone. You don't, you don't want pastor to say that. I'm bridling my tongue. Because you really don't want me to respond to that. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But it's time this year for me to let my mouth open and straighten y'all out because you keep messing up. That's right, man. Quit walking from up here and ask me where the microphone at. Don't ask me where no mic. I know where this one at. I know where it's supposed to be. I don't know where the rest of them at. Don't ask me. I don't use them. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm getting on everybody. I, I mean what I say. I'm letting you know. And listen, and I ain't boasting great. I'm going to follow through because I need to get you in line. You get tired of my mouth. You know where that microphone at. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What did I tell you to go? Proverbs 13. I, I, I love it. I love it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse, verse, what verse I want? Verse 3. He said what? Oh, hallelujah. Read that again. Read one more time for me. Don't, don't you want to live? Or keep your mouth. Close your mouth. Stop running your mouth. Stop boasting great things. You, you, you'll survive. But if you don't keep your mouth shut. Oh, hallelujah. Then y'all get mad when somebody tell you, shut your mouth. <laughs> How many of us, oh God, you're so good. How many of us got in a fight and we told somebody before we hit them, you better shut your mouth. That's right. That's right. Then they shut their mouth. Bow. Told you to shut. Listen, you could have saved your teeth if you had to shut your mouth. Because I told you, say one more thing. <laughs> now you now you gonna make that person go in the rap because you wouldn't shut your mouth. Oh hallelujah. That's why I laugh. God, God is good. He know y'all all y'all that had a fault, you better shut up for what we tell the kid. Shut up for I slap you in your mouth. They keep on talking pow. You wanna keep your life, shut your mouth. You don't want God to punish you, shut your mouth. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. read it again. Verse 13. I didn't write this. Y'all reading it for yourself, right? Read it again. What does it say? He that keepeth his mouth. You might live a little longer. God might not kill you for opening, letting your mouth overload your body. We're talking about the nature of the tongue. The nature of the tongue is to say something. Come on. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that opened and wide his lip. It's going to cause your death. It's going to cause your death. Listen, I didn't write that. I'm trying to show you, listen, the nature of the tongue is always want to. I heard people say some folk got sharp tongue. Yep, they probably made a straight line to hell too. They got a sharp tongue. In other words, they can say things that cut you up and they think that's something good. People think it's something good because folk know how to say things that cut folks up. Then well, what's so good about you going to hell? Come on, he just told you that. All right, all of y'all that think you got sharp tongues, I'm showing you your destination. So you better get that tongue and make it dull. Better yet, you better get that tongue and shut it up and shut it down and close your mouth. Come on, got another one for you. Proverbs 21. Thank you, Jesus. Cannot be 